Welcome to another episode of ZBrush on the iPad. I've got a request from uh, one of my viewers who asked if uh, if I could show my process for using Z spheres to create a T-pose uh, model, a T-pose character. And I'm leveraging these three planes from a previous tutorial, kind of give us a, a direction to go. But this kind of gives you a view of basically something similar to what we're going to end up with. And yeah, it looks a little inappropriate on the back, but don't worry about that. That's just part of the process. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go ahead and scrap this and start over. And hopefully we'll all benefit and come up with something even better. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit add a new Z sphere. And then this original Z sphere, you know, I'm going to just go ahead and delete it. And it's gone. And so now we're down to single Z sphere. We're going to turn on uh, symmetry mode. And then using move, we're just going to move this into the head position. You know, and you can situate it in all your views, obviously. You know, if your views aren't set up perfectly, things are not going to end up perfect. Uh, here, that's looking pretty decent. So, start out, we're going to use add, and we're going to add a little neck piece. And then we're just going to jump right on top of that with the body. Okay. Use move, drag that into position. Scale that guy up quite a bit. Remember, you've got your preview. You can always see where you're at. We've got a nice peanut going there. So congratulations. <laughs> That's what you meant to do. You're in business, right? Um, so constantly going around, checking it from various angles. You know, this can certainly be done without these multi plain uh, views, but if you know what you're doing and you have these views, it's certainly going to make for a quicker process and, and get you to your final result uh, quicker in the end. You're going to, your proportions are going to be more spot on. Um, you're going to not be guessing what to do at different stages because you're just going to know. Let's see here. Let's drag out the arm. What I'll do a lot of times is I'll start a thing like this, like an arm, and spread it out. And then you can, using your add, click in the middle of a span there. And then you'll get some additional, additional stuff to work with here. So you can scale that up, scale it down, pop in another one. Um, I'm getting a little unsure of myself of which tool I want to use where. You know, constantly be previewing. You can see our body section got all messed up somehow in the process. Um, and that's probably to do with kind of doubling up on the neck. So if you just kind of move it around. Um, maybe play with the scale, move some of these other pieces around that may fix it. Yeah, now we're in a happier place. Um, let's see here. You know, just be checking that. You know, you may or may not want to do that neck piece. You decide. All right, so now let's go ahead and add pelvic area. I added two pelvic areas. I only wanted one. And this may be one of those cases where it's too much 
geometry. Yeah, so we'll just use that as the start of our tail, shall we? You would think, hey, he's done this once. Shouldn't he have it figured out by now? No. No, because, you know, you do things slightly different, change your mind, maybe, you, maybe you're trying to work more quickly. So, yeah, it's a whole thing. Got another piece in there. Bring it out. We're looking at it in the various views. Check how things are building. Yeah, that actually is looking okay. And on the last one, I tried to flush out the butt a little bit more, but yeah, I don't think that was necessarily worth it, worth my while, if you will. I'm gonna add another piece to the middle, scale that up to chunk up those thighs a bit more. Let's add to the leg. That next extension, kind of the, the calves. And this has been very useful to have my different views and uh, work from those. So otherwise I'd have to be you know, checking proportions again and again and, you know, telling myself that, hey, we'll just address it later, which is true, it's fine. But this is, this is faster, indeed. And front toes. Whoops. Got to use move, not add. Scale up this portion. Let's check our preview geometry. It's looking pretty good. Might add a little thickness to the calves. Add another one in there. Whoops. So that's a good thing to see. If you, if you scale or move or rotate in between two Z spheres, it's going to affect everything below it. See that? So that, you know, if that's what you want, then great. If it isn't, then you know why it's doing that. But if you scale or move directly on the Z-sphere, that's when you're going to get it to uh, just scale that single Z-sphere or affect that single Z-sphere. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and add the muzzle to the front of this guy's face here. Scale it up a bit. Like I said, I this is my second time doing this, so I think I'm working a little faster than I did the first time. You know, I'd already gone through the steps of deciding, you know, do you want to do that? Do you want to add a Z-sphere there? Yes, no. But just know, it's not always this, this quick or this slow, depending on who you are and what you think. Okay, let's add to the hands. And with the feet, I'm just going to leave them, you know, pretty simple. We're not going to use Z-spheres to designate the uh, individual toes. Uh, but on the hand, we are. Because, you know, hands, very uh, expressive. You'll see I use them a lot, right? <laughs> My own hands. So that's way too big. I'm just going to tap in here, throw down a couple of quick finger roots. And then in the top view, I can start to move those around and then scale them so they're basically the same size or what they should be. Let's see. Yep, a good little start, if you will. OK, 
Okay, and then we're gonna add on to each of those. Whoops, you gotta use the right tool. That's another thing, like I, I mentioned, uh, or maybe I didn't mention it, I mentioned it in the version that I didn't record. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've been using, well, last night I decided to use Nomad for a little bit, and it's been a while because ever since ZBrush was announced, I kind of, you know, didn't want to use Nomad because I was so excited for ZBrush. But, um, you know, I hadn't seen that they had made several updates to bring, you know, their tool, their app, that much closer to ZBrush. And so, you know, kudos to all you Nomad users out there. You're definitely benefiting uh, from the release of ZBrush because I think it lit a fire under uh, Nomad to you know, add more functionality, give people less reasons to want to switch or more reasons to stay, however you want to you wanna spin that. Um, but there are some things that, you know, you tell me if you're an avid uh, user of Nomad and maybe I just am missing it somehow, but there's some things that they definitely don't have. Like, I love this little wheel to just kind of hold down smooth, and I know you can do that over here, um, but to have it all in this one place and have these things multi, you know, these buttons multi-function, super nice. I can also snap to my views by holding down those. Uh, I haven't been able to figure out how to do that in um, Nomad, and it really frustrates me because I have to keep going up to you know the little widget up in the corner and snapping to different views and who's got time for that not me <laughs> you know initially additionally Z spheres definitely nothing like that in the current version of Nomad that being said, I have been told that uh, they're planning to add it, so we'll see. But 90% of everything in Nomad is definitely inspired by this app, ZBrush. And for me, who, you know, learned digital sculpting, uh, in ZBrush, uh, there's just some some ways of working that's really hard to get away from, uh, you know, when using Nomad. So I love it. All right, so we're getting close here. Um, you know, you could add some extra Z spheres for the cheek pieces and then kind of the brow here. You know, it just depends how much you want your guy to look like a frog or not. And ultimately, you know, if I take this character all the way to completion, it's not going to be um, this this geometry, this What's the term I'm looking for? Uh, flow, the polyflow is not going to be remain from from this. This is just, you know, this Z spheres stuff is just to get the general shape going, and there are different ways to do it. In previous series, I showed how to do it with insert mesh and honestly I probably use that more than Z spheres these days that process just because a lot of times I'm just playing when I'm 
sculpting and I'm sketching, if you will. I kind of use it as a tool to kind of discover what it is I'm trying to create. And so Z spheres is more intentional for me. Like, you know what you're going to make. You've decided that this is the best tool to get you there. And that's all there is to it. You know, not a lot of just playing around. I mean, there could be, but for me, um, that's how, that's how I use it. Whereas in the other path of using, uh, you know, Dynamesh and, and all that, it's like I've sculpted a head and I just want to start adding to it because I'm, I'm running with it, I'm riffing. So anyways, this is a, a perfectly acceptable T-Pose character. And at this point, you can, you know, go to your preview, hold down, and then if you're happy with the resolution and everything, just hit make adaptive skin. It's gonna work its magic in the background here. You're not gonna see anything, you can even turn off preview and you might think, okay, didn't work. Well, like a lot of things in ZBrush, it's trying to be as non-destructive as possible. So it's created a skin version and put it in with the rest of your tools. So click on that, adds it to our scene. We can hide the Z spheres. And then now this guy is ready to be sculpted upon if you will. So if I'm grabbing my my move brush and start moving things around, getting it closer, you can see that, you know, these were just basically tubes, these ears, but you know, I would move those out, make them more of a an ear shape. You know, and this level of dynamashes a little too much for my liking. Yeah, we had it up pretty high. So I'm gonna to go to Dynamesh, bring it down to, you know, 115 or so, re-Dynamesh it. Let's look at the, well, that's a little better. Might even still be a little high, but now things are a little more pliable. Still, yeah, higher than I want. So I'm gonna bring it down to 70-ish, 72. Let's dynamesh that again. Let's check our little pieces, like fingers are still looking okay. All right, and the reason I like to work in the lower poly mode is things just move better. You know, because you may, we're making some major changes to the silhouette of our character. And the more polys we have, the more it kind of resists that change. So, see, I'm flattening out his feet. That's more of a rabbit foot. You know. So I'm not gonna do much of this. I'm just kinda wanted to demonstrate the flow at this point and you know, look out for more videos, leave comments if you want me to take this rabbit character further, but essentially wanted to show you my process for going from Z-Sphere to T-Pose in ZBrush on the iPad.